Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lisa and if you guys are new here, today I am back with another luxury review and today it is not a bag, but if you are craving for bag reviews, I do have one on the Prada Re-Edition, the Dior Caro, as well as the Chanel 19. And I also have vlogs on when I got these items, so make sure you check that out. But today's video, I am actually going to be reviewing a Dior item, but it is going to be a belt. The belt that I will be reviewing is the saddle belt. This is what it looks like all curled up. I'm gonna show you guys up close. This is what it looks like. So we actually have a pretty jam-packed video. In today's video, I'm going to be going through when I got the belt, why I got it, how much it was. I'm also gonna go through the pros and cons of the belt, any type of styling tips, and also why you need to have this belt. Because honestly, I hope that I kind of sell you on this. So without any further ado, let's get started on the video. So pretty much with the Dior belt, if you guys follow me on YouTube already and watch my vlogs, you would know that I actually spontaneously bought the Dior belt last year when I was in Paris, solo traveling. And this one was one of those purchases that I made that I feel like it's equivalent to when you're at Sephora and you grab one of those mini travel size items on your way out. This was kind of like that for me in a sense that when I went into Dior, I had absolutely no intention of buying this belt. So what actually happened was I was inside Dior and I was trying to buy a bag for my mom and I was shopping on behalf of her and we couldn't find her anything and I saw the belt from the corner of my eye. I actually Pinterested the outfits that I could style with a Dior belt or just a black belt in general and then it made me realize and wonder why I didn't have a investment black belt. Going right into it, pretty much the reason why I ended up spontaneously deciding besides the fact that the Pinterest pictures very much inspired me, I didn't have a good quality black belt and I feel like the black belts that I had actually had issues, which is why I'm gonna show you guys in a second. The old belts that I have, I have it here with me, the black ones that I used to have and then why they were issues. Basically, I realized that I didn't have a good quality belt. And then when I looked at the price tag of this item, I got it for 490 euros and that was the price at the time. I got it in September of 2021 and it was more expensive than my Chanel car holder, which by the way, I also have a review on that. But this one was 470. 70 euros when I purchased it and the belt was more expensive which didn't really make sense to me when you convert it I'm Canadian so when I convert it to today's dollar not back in September 2021 I believe it goes up to like 600 like I want to say 90 or whatever did I have a reason to spend 690 dollars including tax for a expensive designer belt the practical answer is I would say Initially, my automatic thought is no, but after thinking about it for a second, I was like, wait, hold on a damn second. A black belt, especially if it's a belt that is literally black, I feel like I'm repeating myself. Essentially, a black belt is the most classic thing you can get. If you had to get a belt, a belt in the color black is literally probably, if you had to pick one belt in your entire life, that is probably going to be the belt that you pick. So I was thinking about it and I'm just like, I am how old right now? I am like, you know, 20 something years old. Even if I live until 70, it would actually be very worth it if I invested in a very good quality staple belt and I don't have to keep on buying belts ever again. It can also be a very luxurious belt that goes with everything. So after I tried it on in the store, I realized the number of ways that I could style this. And I also made sure that I bought it in a size that wasn't just for my waist. I bought it so that it was for my waist, for my hip, etc., so I could wear it multiple ways and not just for the one part of my entire body. So this brings me to my next point about why I chose Dior because I feel like of all the fashion houses or just all the brands that I could have chosen my one staple everlasting black belt, why did I choose Dior? Because honestly, I, I could have also chosen Chanel, but I feel like I didn't see any Chanel belts that were as classic as this particular design here. This one is as basic as you can get. 
get. This almost replicated the Gucci belt, but the reason why I didn't go for the Gucci belt is because I feel like too many people have it. And at this point, because too many people had it, it almost seemed more like a trend and more like a phase. That being said, I still love Gucci. You guys can see my Gucci Marmont bag up here. And I also have a review on it, by the way. Out of all the fashion houses that I was thinking about, I feel like honestly, the three or four brands that I feel like are just super everlasting are Chanel, Hermes, Dior, and Louis Vuitton. I don't know about you guys, but honestly, in the last few years, after just like even window shopping, not actually shopping because I don't have that many of each item, but for Dior, it quickly became one of my favorite, favorite brands. I absolutely love their design through and through. I love how staple this is. I feel like it's kind of in your face, but not too much. It's still at a point where some people still ask me like, what is CD? mostly my guy friend and I have to explain but otherwise it's still kind of low-key but I feel like the people that you know somewhat know designer bags will know what it is it was the perfect everlasting belt that I wanted so before I go into the details of the belt I wanted to also explain why this belt really really caught my eye so for this belt and unlike the old belts that I have and I'll show you the issues now why I really needed to upgrade my belt the belt that I used very frequently prior to getting the Dior belt is this one from from Topshop. I can't remember how much I got this for, but it's kind of like a cowboy style black belt. And honestly, for the longest time, the style was actually very practical up until a certain extent. I think my biggest pet peeve about this belt and the other one that I have here as well is the fact that it really dangles all the time. What I mean by that is after I put it around my waist, like so, let's just say, I go up to here and pin it through. Essentially, this part gets really, really annoying because when you're wearing it, imagine just wearing it on your waist and this is just constantly falling down. It just gets really, really annoying and also just in the way. When I was looking at the Dior belt and I tried it on, they have a little loop here. After you put it through this hole, it is still, I guess, just like sturdy enough that after you loop it around here, you can put it through this belt buckle and the way that the leather is also designed kind of just like make sure that this stands still on its own and there's no dangly part. I guess it also has a lot to do with the length. I think it would have been extremely helpful if they had another loop here. But that being said with the Dior belt, I just love how it can actually just go all around your waist perfectly without having to dangle. Also, this was a huge, huge, huge factor of why I realized investing in really good leather does make a huge difference. With this belt, I have now since worn it for, it's been almost a year. I wear it so often. You guys will not believe how often I wear this belt. I wear it over blazers, whatever. Like I will show you all the outfits that I usually style with this belt. But essentially I wear it so often. And what I find is that when you actually get a really good quality leather item, it doesn't just like come apart. And I think this is just because whenever I shop, I buy everything for myself. So I always save the money. So back in the day, I would always obviously shop at more affordable places, even when it comes to belts. And I find that what happens is this leather usually comes up and comes apart. This one didn't, but my previous black belt did. Whereas this one, I've worn it consistently for almost a year. It doesn't ever just like become flimsy or come apart I would say that the only little I guess like defect or not defect but like wear and tear the edge of the belt where this has to go through both both of the holes. This part, you can see a little bit of like a wear, but that is pretty much it. Even when it comes to the actual belt buckle, I feel like it doesn't really scratch up that much. And it's also a matte enough gold that even if it does scratch, it won't be extremely obvious. I feel like if they had designed this belt looking like a very glossy gold, the minute it scratches, you are going to see. So going through the details of the belt, once again, I think it's really important if you get this to get this belt in a size that works on your waist as well as your hip because you're spending this much money on a damn belt. Please try to 
get the biggest bang for your buck as much as possible. So max two body parts, unless if you put this around your neck, but I don't think people do that. But anyway, basically let's go through the details of this belt. So the way that this belt is function, I'm gonna just flip it around as though you guys are gonna wear it. You guys can see that there is a little loophole here. There is this little thing. I'm guessing it just holds this belt buckle together. Right here, it just has a stamp. It just says made in Italy and my size. So personally, I got the belt in size 75. Also, you can see the Christian Dior just at the back. You see the holes obviously of the belt and how you wear the belt is you put it through behind the CD to go through the hole. You loop it around and you pick a hole that fits your size. Another thing that I wanted to mention once again, why I really like and what I've noticed with really good quality leather, especially belts, this section of the belt, usually with my other belt, especially at the beginning where it's supposed to get the most amount of push, I feel like usually here, not only does the leather come apart, but also usually here, it gets extremely wrinkly when it's a very poor quality belt. And then this part gets all loose and gross and everything. And I feel like for this one, I still haven't been able to see that. So when I think about the longevity of this belt, assuming that my size doesn't change, but that would be up to me. Assuming that my size doesn't change too much, I feel like this belt could last a very, very long time. So at the price of 490 euros, I feel like it actually might be a little bit justified depending on how long I'm planning to wear this belt. Another thing that I wanna talk about, if you guys are new to my channel, you guys can find me talking about this in especially my first video with the Gucci Marmont and my very first luxury purchase. I think that when you realize what type of luxury purchaser you are, it will give you the biggest peace of mind. For example, what I mean by that is there's usually two types of luxury purchasers and you could be both. One is you're like a collector and you wanna resell it and you want everything in perfect condition. You don't wanna scratch like ever at all. Yeah, most likely going to sell it, which is why you want it in really good condition, etc. The other basket of luxury purchasers I feel are people who really just want to use their item you know they know that it's a luxury item but at the same time they want to use it like a normal bag and not be like super anal on a tiny little scratch or whatever and I feel like if you're collecting or if you're trying to resell I 100% understand which is why I can see why like if there's like a minor scratch if there's like I don't know just like wear and tear to your item it's extremely hurtful and you're probably like why you know what I mean I think that when it comes to first of all the nature of this item it is literally a belt I don't see the use factor as much as a reselling like a Chanel bag. I'm sure you can still resell this, but honestly, I think it's really, really meant to be used instead of just purely collected. With that being said, I think, you know, if you are planning on buying this item, I think it is really good to just kind of keep that in mind. Like if you think you're going to be one of those people where one minor scratch is going to kill you, then I don't know if spending this much money on a belt is going to be super worth it for you. If you kind of have like a reasonable expectation, like obviously try to take care of it as much as you can, but at the same time, recognize that it is a belt. It needs to be used. You need to wear it for its use factor. Then when you do get a minor scratch, you're not going to kill yourself over it. For me, as even like with all my designer bags, I'm a more of a practical person. I prefer to use my items. I actually don't foresee myself reselling anything. I, I see myself using it myself and then also potentially just passing it down. I just really don't see myself like being and killing myself over every little scratch. The good thing about this belt is like I said, because of the nature of this metal, you're already gonna be a little bit more at peace because even if you do get a tiny little scratch, you're not going to see it super obviously, but at the same time, it's just, I think it's like something to keep in mind as well. The other advice that I have for you, if you are planning to buy this belt as well, is if you happen to have a trip coming up in Europe to buy it overseas. I honestly feel like, especially if you're also from North America, it is a lot cheaper just buying, especially these French fashion house brands abroad. You do save a ton of money. For example, 
I got mine at 490 euros. I don't know what it is today, but the retail value of the price in Canadian, if you buy in Canadian stores, is already a lot higher. If you happen to also have a trip coming up, like I would probably just use that time to purchase the item and the follow-up tip to that is if you are going to buy abroad make sure you bring your passport to the store so you can claim your taxes back basically when you're in europe um there is always something called the vat which is the tax there which us foreigners are not obligated to pay so you pay it up front and then you can claim it at the airport but you must bring your passport to the airport. I will also leave my TikTok here to talk more about this whole Europe versus North America luxury shopping that you guys can check out. Going on to how I style it. Honestly, I was not kidding you when I tell you that I use and style this bag for almost I don't want to say everything because obviously there are things that do not require a belt, but this belt is so practical that you could probably style it over anything. For example, right now I'm kind of wearing like a strapless formal dress. If I really wanted to put this around my waist, I feel like I can. The items that I do find myself using the belt very often are definitely over top of blazers. I feel like over top of blazers is so cute. There's also light jackets, like trench coats, etc. I think that's also super cute. Shirt dresses is also a favorite of mine. So just literally, if you have like one of those button up dresses to just put it over, I feel like that adds a little statement. The next thing that I absolutely love wearing this on is also high-waisted pants of course especially if your outfit is more on the basic side like if you're wearing a tube top with like dress pants then just by simply putting on a Dior belt you're just already ready to go I even like to use it as more kind of like something to just tighten my pants with so I feel like that's also really practical so if you do have a pair of pants that is on the looser side you can also use your belt to kind of tighten that up and lastly over top of like skirts or whatever because I feel like adds a little oomph to your outfit as well. So that's another thing just over top of skirts that I am wearing. I feel like all of these options are just some of my favorite ways, but there are so, so, so many ways you can style this belt. After I got the black one, I actually got extremely inspired to get the white one. I don't know if I'm going to get it in the exact saddle version. I was looking at the Dior belts that are available. Every single one of them are just so beautiful. I feel like there's a lot of belts that after using this one and spending this much money on it, but realizing the quality, it has actually allowed me to really reevaluate some of the choices I'm going to be making in the future. So I feel like my next belt is going to also be a more staple belt, probably white, just to have a belt for the summer, probably also from Dior, if I'm going to be honest with you. But anyway, stay tuned for that. I will probably put it on the vlog and probably do a review on it. But with that being said, that is pretty much the video for today. I hope you guys found this helpful and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!